Hello everybody. Um, in this video, we're going to take a look at snack bars and notifications. Snack bars have popped up a little bit, uh, and we're going to just do another quick example of that again, just so that you're aware of it. But more importantly, being able to put notifications uh, into your mobile app is pretty important. So it's something that I want to dedicate all of this time to going over. Before I do, there are two dependencies that you need to add to your pubspec.yaml file when you get started. So one of them is um, Flutter not local notifications. This is what you, the package that you need to actually get notifications going with Flutter. Uh, and also time zone we're going to use because we wanna be able to set the time in which notifications are going to show up. So you might have, for instance, an app that's going to need to remind everybody, everybody 24 hours, you know, don't forget to check my app uh, for any of those good predatory mobile experiences. <laughs> um, but uh, once you have these two dependencies, uh, you're ready to get started. So once again, I'm on just a basic uh, file here delete all of our comments. Um, the exercise that we are doing today is going to be um, notifications and snack bars, snack bars and notifications. More on the notification side of things. Uh, so we're just going to, I think, put notifications here. Notifications. And just wiping all of the usual stuff that's not needed. I think the first place we have to change stuff is in here. Um, so first let's get rid of our you know, things we don't need as usual. Uh, we can clear the, uh, the body here, I believe. Just get rid of the body completely actually. Uh, do we need this floating action button? I think the answer is no, so we're just going to get rid of it. This comment that I left here. Okay, um, the first thing that we're going to need to add is we're going to need to set up a few things. Now, the goal of this app that we're going to, this little demo we're going to do today, is we're going to get a few buttons that we can click on and they will set up notifications that will trigger under the appropriate circumstances. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with um, we're going to use a form. Now, do I want the form on this page or can I use it on the next one? I think I want my form on this page. Um, and so just to set that up, remember anytime you have a form, you're going to want to have a form key, which is global key, uh, form state. That's a capital F? Yeah, it's a capital F. Form state. Yes, all happy and good. Uh, and we're also going to need some notifications. Notifications, plural. Uh, why are you mad at me? Uh, I think this is because we're going to make a class for notifications. Yeah, you know what? We're going to do that. Um, so. Before I do, now let me think a little bit about exactly what I want to. Um, now I don't think I actually want a second page here. I think I want to just have everything on this page uh, and then we'll just have anything pop up as necessary. So I'm gonna go and make a new file for notifications and we can transfer over to that now. So new start file, notifications, it's gonna have a class called notifications. Uh, don't need parameters, just a class. Um, and let's import that back in our main function so nothing is broken. Please and thank you. Okay. Um, so just to, just to make sure that that's there. We'll, I think, continue on this class in a bit. I wanna get my um, interface set up first and then I can worry about actually getting everything functional. So just to set up our little interface here, uh, I guess this rebuilt for some reason. Um, nothing too amazing over there. Uh, what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna have some buttons in our app bar here. And when we click on the buttons in the app bar, it'll trigger our notifications. So in our app bar here, we have our title, let's have some actions. Um, so we're gonna have three icon buttons um, and each one is gonna run a different function. One of them is gonna make notifications now, notification now, um, and the icon will be icon, icons, uh, notifications, this one. 
Uh, let's space this out so it looks a little nicer. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and let's make three of these. This one will be timer three. And this one will be list. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have... This one will do notifications now. This one will do notifications in like three seconds, I guess, just so we can see what a delay looks like. So we'll see that one later. Um, and this one will be um, to show pending notifications. And all of these are red because we have to actually write all of these functions. Uh, so let's do that. Um, over here, we're going to need to write each of those functions. So let's write them all first so that this thing stops complaining to us, and then we can define what they all do. So we're going to need notification now. We're going to need um, notification later. So since notification now is immediate, I don't think it needs to be asynchronous. I could be mistaken. I'll leave it as not, and if it breaks, then I can fix that. Um, but definitely anything that's going to come later is going to be a future uh, notification later. It is asynchronous, in parentheses here, and we're going to uh, write the code for that in a bit. Uh, this might actually be mad. Is this okay? I guess it doesn't care if I don't return anything. It doesn't seem to give me an error. So, uh, And then finally, another future, uh, show pending notifications, also asynchronous. This one's going to show those. Okay, um, now for any of these to work, we need to actually have our, um, our notifications class built. So for now, I mean, there's nothing to actually see here. Uh, I suppose we'll compile just so that we can look, see what the buttons look like for fun. Easy, thank you. So we got our little bell, our little three seconds, and we got a little menu, uh, which is going to show us some stuff. So um, let's start off by getting notifications now working and then we can test that one and then go on and so forth. So notifications class, what do we need for this to work? Um, we're going to need to import a package. Uh, we're going to import, now I don't even think we actually need material for this. We might be able to get away without it because all that we're doing with this class is actually setting up how our notification is going to work in our app. We don't actually need to show anything really. So uh, we do need to import flutter local notifications. This has got the code that we need to actually get the notification stuff working. Um, we're going to need to, um, let's see here. We're going to need a few things that are built in for us. So we're going to need a Flutter local notifications plugin, uh, which comes, I think, from this package. Flutter local notifications, that one, yeah. Um, we are also going to need a uh, notification ID, notification ID, which I guess we'll start as 100 for fun. Um, and we also need the details for notification, and that's a notification details variable, uh, and we'll call it platform channel info. Uh, all right, all of that seems to be allowed. Uh, and so I can now go and um, initialize. So, init. Now, uh, this init function is what we need for everything to work properly. And so just to remind myself that I need to run that, um, in our main function, let's go back a bit. When we build, we need to set up our notifications so everything is all ready to go. So we're going to call notifications.init to initialize everything. And we're also going to set up our time zones. Uh, now I think, did I import? I haven't imported time zones yet. So let's do that. Um, we're going to need to import um, time zone. Does the autocomplete time zone for me? No, package, colon, time. Uh, I hope this didn't explode on me or something. Okay, it says that this is valid, so I guess it's just like, doesn't know how to autocomplete. Okay, whatever. Import time zone. Wow, yeah, it really doesn't want to autocomplete for me for some reason. Time zone uh, slash time zone dot dart. 
Uh, let's import these as pz, and this as pz, so that I can call the methods when I need to. Um, I don't know why it didn't let me autocomplete that. It's kind of annoying. Uh, it should have gone okay because I did a pub get over here, but maybe something weird's happening. I don't know. Um, that's okay. We're going to go over here, and we need to do tz dot um, dot. What is it? Uh, initialize time zone. Yeah, that one. Uh, this is to make sure that we can set up so that when we specify an exact time of our notification to happen, it's going to work no matter where we are. Uh, kind of important. Now, when we initialize, right now nothing happens. We need to actually do some stuff. So let's set up things we need to get all of this working. Now, most of this is going to be probably invisible to us, so it's kind of just a bunch of code that you know is code for coding purposes. Um, not something we're actually going to get visual feedback for, but I'm going to write it all, and I guess you'll have to follow along. So. Um, I don't use iOS, but I'm going to include the iOS code here as well, even though if you're not publishing it for iOS, you don't need it. Um, anybody who is, probably would be nice to have it. So we're going to do both Android and iOS back to back. So first off is to initialize it, uh, the settings. So we need initialization settings Android uh, is Android initialization settings, boom. Um, and there is an icon for this. I don't know why I need an icon for this. Um, MIP map slash IC launcher. Um, this line of code here, I'm pretty sure, is just necessary so that you can default to your Android device to actually be ready to support um, the notifications plugin. Um, similarly, I think. Uh, yeah, this is like the longest line of code ever. I guess I can space that down. There we go. Um, okay, and then I'll do the iOS right below it. So the iOS version is, you know, same thing, iOS equals iOS initialization settings. Uh, sorry, I, O, S, in, why is this unhappy with me? I sure hope that the most recent, um, most recent flutter hasn't caused some weird nonsense to happen here. Uh, am I missing an import? I don't think so. Hmm. Wait, time to resorting to googling. I hope not, but maybe. iOS initializations. Yeah, that. Uh, it is. It is a new a new update, isn't it? Okay, hopefully this doesn't explode. I mean, I again, I don't do iOS stuff, so I'm trying to at least include what's necessary here, but it looks like literally like 30 days ago was an update to local notifications. Um, so that's not great. Like if you look at the Stack Overflow page I pulled up here, literally <laughs> 24 days ago, the initialization settings that I have been using for this course uh, suddenly isn't valid and you need to use a different one. So, okay, hopefully it's just a name change. I really hope I don't have to do anything else. Um, but if that's the case, then you know, uh, I guess we're gonna we're gonna see. So let's try. Dar, dar. There we go. Okay. Apparently this is what is needed. Um, I'll assume that all of the values that go inside of here are the same thing. Um, one. So what goes in here are um, on did receive yeah, that. <laughs> um, when we receive. Uh, notif notif notifications, you need to include some, basically run a function, it doesn't seem to do anything. Um, let's see. Uh, it says return null, I guess nothing really needs to happen. I think this is all just a, like a formality to some extent, but supposedly needs to be here. Maybe it's important, I'm not too sure. Not an Android, or not an iOS expert. String title, uh, string body, String payload. Okay, the the red um, <laughs> the red lines have gone away, so I'll assume what I did was correct. And apparently, you need this for iOS. Uh, you can trust, hopefully, that I'm not lying to you. Okay, um, now initialization settings is going to be a variable I set up. Settings. Yes, this. Uh, if you're on Android, then we need the uh, these settings, and if you're on iOS, we need the other settings. 
Okay. Um, now, that's for setting up all the like initialization. Um, next, we have the plugin from the package, and that needs to be initialized too. Lots of initialization going on. Um, yes, this. Um, where was I? Oh no, uh, dot initialize. Apparently it needs initialization settings. This feels like this really like weird circular thing where it's like, I need settings from one place for settings from another place for settings from another place. So I think this is all just this gigantic chain so that the plugin here um, gets the settings that are appropriate for the device that you're using. So if you're on Android, it takes the Android settings, makes the initialization, um, makes this variable here, which then gets passed to the plugin, which is what actually needs it. Um, now, let's see here. Um, okay, I need that. I need a semicolon. Also, um, on, oh no, is this another thing that's changed now? Um, there was supposed to be a, there was a parameter called on select notification, but apparently it's gone now. There's on did receive background notification response and on did receive notification response. But neither of those are the thing that I was looking at right now. Let's hope that this parameter that's missing here doesn't cause anything to explode. Um, but I may have to come back here because apparently things have updated since, uh, which is always the most annoying thing when I'm trying to prep for, for a course. Okay, um, so our plugin has the data it needs to set up. Now we need to set up the notification info for the two different kinds of devices we could have. And to do that, I think we're going to set some variables up in our class. Um, so we're going to have a uh, channel ID, which will be test notif. We're going to have a channel name, which will be test notifications. So that's what we're doing. And we're going to have a channel description, which is uh, the test notification channel. And we're just testing to see if this works, hopefully. So far, nothing actually happens yet. So we still need to take a few more steps before we can actually get to the point where we're sending stuff. But I think we're getting close. Um, So um, I think this parameter actually might be um, on did receive notification response, and this should take a function. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And what I think we're going to do is we're going to write this function. Uh, I guess we'll just call it this. I suppose that seems fine, right? Um, yeah. And we'll define that function um, and it's going to be a this, this is a function that's a future right call this method before using the plugin further uh, well you know what we're gonna we're gonna see what happens I'm not quite confident that this is gonna do what I want it to do but I do want to uh, at least make sure this is here maybe you know what I will um, I will leave this for now and we'll see if we need to do that later. I just want to, at this moment, see if I can get the one notification pop up and then later I can worry about other stuff. Okay, before I move on, I need channel information. So if I'm on Android, I need channel info for that, which is Android notification details. And I need to have the channel ID, channel name, and um, channel description. Why, are, why is this mad? Did I spell it wrong up above? Channel I, oh yes, it should be a small d. There we go, channel ID. Okay. Semicolon. So this is the information that goes into a notification. Uh, we need to do the same thing for iOS. So iOS channel info is iOS. Oh, so now it's um, Darwin notification details. I don't know what the word Darwin is doing here. Don't ask me. Uh, platform, uh, hold up, sorry. Um, what am I saying? 
platform channel info, this thing here is going to be set to notification details. Um, if we are on, oh wait, sorry. Um, nothing goes in here. This is just done. For some reason I thought there actually needed to be information in here. Um, no, okay. Platform channel info now is the details from either Android or from iOS. I feel like this stuff needs like some heavy commenting. Um, maybe I'll write that at some point, just like go through what each of these components does individually. But for now, I guess it's just uh, safe to say, you know, you need all this stuff, otherwise notifications won't pop up. Um, but I think pretty much if, if I had to like describe what the steps are doing here, it's you need to have everything initialized and the, the requirements for the plugin are not the, um, are, are, are independent of what kind of device you're on. And so whether it's Android or iOS, you need to essentially set up your plugin with the appropriate settings. Um, if you are on Android, you need to have the channel name, channel ID, channel description. iOS, I guess you don't need that for some reason. Again, not an Android X or not an iOS expert. Um, but I believe this is everything we need to initialize. So now everything is set up and ready to go. So now I can actually make a, um, a, uh, notification. So I'm going to call it send notification now. So I want it to go now. Um, we're going to take some parameters. We're going to take a title. We're going to take a body and we're going to take a payload. We're going to print out our plugin and we're going to use that and show a notification and it's going to need a notification ID and we already have one up here which starts as 100 and we're going to increment it and show that so uh, notification ID plus plus to make sure that it's a different number every time uh, we got the title we got the body and the notification details are the um, platform channel information and the payload is the payload Let's see if I got this all to work. Yep, yep, yep. Title, body, so on and so forth. Okay, that's all there. Now what I need to do is back in my main, I need to set up my, um, I guess this is all ready to go, right? Except for this function. So when I want a notification now, let's send a notification. Notification, send notification now. I need a title. So this is the title. The body is the body, and the payload and this is the payload. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. All right. Uh, go. Hey. Whoa, that was very loud. Um, so, title, body, and if I click here, Okay, this is really, can I, can I increase the size of this at all? Okay, maybe I'll get rid of this. Um, title, body, all right, one sec. All right, after careful research, I have discovered the purpose of the payload. So, uh, what you see here um, is your notification. It has the name of your app up here, the time at which the notification was, um, was received, title, and the body. Now, when you click on this, right now nothing happens, um, but maybe we want something to happen. So if that is the case, what we need to do is actually to add a bit of code to our, um, to our notifications code over here so that in the future, when we select a notification, uh, we do something with it. So we're gonna take the payload asynchronously and assuming that there is payload, let's uh, print it out. Uh, on this function, payload is the payload. Okay, so we have a function that will actually 
take the payload and output it so we can see it in the little terminal. So that will show up any time that we click on a notification from this. Now in our main here, um, oops. Um, or sorry, not in our main. It's in our. It's in over here. Um, so actually, no. I called it this, but it should be this. On the receive notification response. Uh, not a semicolon, just a comma. Okay, let's see if this works. I think that it should, and hopefully I'm not mistaken, but I guess we're gonna find out. Okay, restart on my app. <laughs> Loud notification. And presumably when I click on this, haha, on did notification response, payload is uh, an instance of notification response. Uh, that's probably not what I wanted, right? Um, because it should give me the actual payload, uh, which it didn't. And I think the reason for this is probably what I mentioned earlier over here, which is that this is not asynchronous when it should be. Let's try that. Uh, I'm gonna turn down my volume so that, that we don't get our ears destroyed by these loud notifications. Okay, boom. Still not doing what I want, which is I want it to actually show the text that says this is the payload. Let's see if I can piece together exactly how to do that. Um, okay, when I, I wonder if I have to wait somewhere. Let's see, over here, where's the other parameter for this one? It's, um, On did receive background notification response. Let's try that. I don't think that should matter. On did receive no background notification response. Let's just try calling the same method. I don't think this will help, but it's always worth testing just to see. Uh, are you mad? Is this unhappy? That was a lot of errors. Oh, that's a lot of errors. Okay, I'm not gonna scroll through all these errors. Uh, this is probably not what I'm looking for. Um, my issue right now is that maybe in here I need some kind of delay. Um, the reason this is tricky is because this is all stuff that's kind of just built into the package and I'm not super familiar with the package because I only used it a little bit up till this point. Um, Now let's uh let me rerun or hold on. let me hit this. This is also kind of weird, right? Because this should or no, this is um this is this is right, I think. But how come it's not actually showing me the information, which is what it should do? Um, I think there is an issue there. And the question is, what is the issue with this? I wonder if it's actually because this should be asynchronous. Let's try that. Um, future init async. There's some, some level of asynchronicity here is not doing what it's supposed to. That didn't do much and my problem still persists here. Um, it's always really bad luck when I'm <laughs> trying to do a demo and it turns out that Flutter has updated and suddenly the functions that I thought would be there are not there and it's causing weird things to happen. Um, okay, I wonder why there is this issue of it only giving me futures back when I'm looking for, um, when I'm looking for actual data. My problem is that right now when I, um, so this show is working because it pops up over here. 
and the print is giving me a future even though I don't really want it to be a future. Um, Okay, is there some way that I can get the data from my notification response? Hmm. Because this shouldn't be a future. This should actually be the the data itself. What if I, does it, does it say that? Uh, Flutter notifications plugin. <laughs> this is gonna be a very long video as we observe me try to debug what's exactly wrong with this code. Um, whereas in class, I'll have hopefully figured it out by then and it'll go a lot quicker. Um, I am quite bamboozled this moment and curious to see if I can figure out exactly why it is giving me not the payload that I want, but instead is giving me a future. Uh, well, I can always try to see if um, if the documentation here will help. So I want to get the payload uh, initialization, retrieving kind of. And that's not really what I want. I'm looking for um, okay so this does displaying which is good well, I, I specifically want the payload the payload has been specified that will be passed through application when the user taps on notification if you're in the tray that's fine but see that it's not when I get the payload, it's coming as a future, but it's not coming as the actual thing that I want. Um, it's a lot more code here than I actually think I needed. Um, mm -hmm. The function, this function, should fire when a notification has been tapped on via the. Did, yes, okay, this is what I'm looking for. Specifying this callback is optional, but it could trigger notification. Display the payload. I want to display the payload. That's good. Notification response dot payload. Oh, okay. So I think I figured it out, which is that um, because a future is showing up, um, or it's not a future, but a, um, where is it? A instance of a notification response is showing up, not the actual message. What I'm getting here is the, um, the whole notification response, but I only want the payload. So actually all I need to do then is go over here and say, uh, oh wait, no, sorry. Uh, inside the dollar sign, Oop. payload dot, um, and this is a um, notification response. We'll just call it notification response. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. This is again, just one of those cases of, wow, 30 days ago, they updated everything. And then suddenly the function I'm looking for is not the one that I'm using. I have to figure out how to make the new one work, but turns out it's not too bad. Um, let's space this down so you can read this a little bit. So, uh, all that other stuff I did was kind of inconsequential. Um, what I did need to do is change this parameter. So that's the actual parameter it's supposed to have. Uh, and yeah, okay. That's what it's actually going to use. Um, and it's going to take that and give the payload. Okay, now hopefully this should work. Let's give this a shot. Run. Notification. Uh, I suppose that's just what this is, right? Is the plugin. Um, is there some way to represent this? I imagine this must have like a test string or something, right? Just so the next time we can actually see something. And now when I click on this, Haha, uh -huh, this is the payload. There we go. Okay, so it didn't take me too long at least to figure out what the heck I was doing, but I did. Okay, now we can start looking at other things because right now the, the just displaying this one notification response payload is not the most interesting thing ever. I mean, in this function where you, re um, when you get the response, probably you can do some more interesting things than just print, um, but that's up to you. 
we're going to move on now and start looking at putting notifications that don't show up this very second because it's you know not the most practical use of notifications you probably want something that's delayed on a timer perhaps so let's set up our timer okay um, the way we're going to do that is we're going to start off I think in our main uh, and we're going to work on notification later so uh, in this case just so that we don't have to wait forever we're just going to set a three second de delay so uh, when is just going to be take the time time zone date time dot now uh, local time dot add a duration of three seconds so this is right now plus three seconds that's all this code does and what we're going to do is we're going to await uh, notifications dot send notification later and we're going to give it uh, title body this is the payload um, but we're also going to give it a fourth parameter, which is when. And this function isn't defined yet, so we should do that. It's going to look just like this one, um, except that it's going to be... Um, yes, yes, I know it doesn't work because we're not done yet. Okay, uh, send notification later. We need a title. We need a body. We need a payload and we need a time zone date time. This is angry because I probably didn't import this. Why is it really not happy with my time zone imports? I'm just going to copy them from here. Give me them time zones. Time zone date time when. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't need the list and I don't need to do it as TZ. I'm just going to leave it here and that should fix my error. Okay, cool. So I have the data I need from a notification. I have when I want it to send it out. So now all I have to do is do um, a return of flutter local notifications plugin dot zoned schedule. And look, it's got all the things already set up. Um, space this out a little bit. Yes, yes, I'll fix these in a bit. My goodness, it's a lot of required parameters. Okay, one at a time. Um, the ID is actually going to be notification ID plus plus. Again, we're going to increment it. Um, title is fine. Body is fine. Scheduled date's going to be when. The notification details are the platform channel info. Um, I promise you it's not null. <laughs> uh, UI local date, holy moly. Um, UI local notification date interpretation. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is, uh, yeah, for the, basically for the specific time zone I'm in. And so I need to basically take this whole thing dot absolute time. Is that right? Uh, so UI, UI, yeah, 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 this thing. Uh, absolute time there we go uh, Android allow while idle sure why not um, and payload we want a payload we're gonna return this monstrosity of an object um, and what this should do if we did this all correctly is it should set up a delayed notification that'll pop up in three seconds and then it'll work just like a normal one let's see if that's the case Okay, so click three, two, one. Look at that. Three seconds later, the thing showed up and I clicked on it. And this is a payload. Nice. Okay, now um, we're almost done here. What I think we're going to do is next up, we're going to. Um, I realize we don't really use any snack bars actually in this uh, exercise at all. Um, I guess we can. Um, 
what I suppose here's what we'll do. Let's set up a snack bar for um, for what we just did. So when we um, when we press the button, just so that we actually get some kind of feedback that hey, you press the button, it'll give us a little snack bar. Just so that you know, I don't I'm not lying about the topic of the lecture. Uh, what I think we're going to do is we're going to wait for this and then make our snack bar. So snack bar, snack bar, uh, the content is um, text notification in three seconds. Scaffold dot of context shows. Uh, oh, this is deprecated. What is it again? Um, scaffold messenger dot show snack bar. Okay, scaffold scaffold messenger dot. You just told me to do this. Ah, uh, okay. What was it actually? It was something different then. Scaffold messenger, but you just said to do that. So frustrating. Scaffold messenger dot of context dot show snack. There we go. Okay. Uh, snack bar, please. All right. Let's uh, let's see if this does what I want it to do. Um. There we go. Notification in three seconds. And just as it goes down, the other thing pops up. And look, there it is. And click on it. Yay! Cool and good. Okay. Uh, I don't feel like there's that much to really talk about for snack bars, so I don't think I'll really go into any more details. You can, you know, tweak parameters, obviously. Um, over here is all the things you can feel like changing if you like to, but I feel like this is the kind of thing that's probably not that useful for me to explain. Um, it's much more better, I think, for much more better, much better if you uh, try to play around with it yourself. Uh, make some snack bars, try tweaking some of these attributes and seeing if you can figure out like how to make whatever you need for your app. Um, okay, now that we have our little snack bar, we have our timer working, we're going to wrap up things with just displaying the um, any of the pending notifications that haven't yet shown up. So right now, every time we hit this, like I could hit this like three times and it'll give me three notifications that should all pop up um, one after the other. So boom, boom, boom. There they are, one, two, three. Um, and click on each of them to come back to the app and nothing really happens. Um, you can have this do more than this, by the way. You can have it so that when you click on that, the button, it returns to the app and opens a new page, for instance. It's kind of up to you. Um, but at, after I press this button three times, it set up three pending notifications. And you might want to be able to see what are the notifications that are pending. So let's try to figure that out. Uh, and I think the way we're going to start is we're going to, uh, I guess, begin in our notifications code. Uh, and we're going to um, let me see here. Oh, there's something else I missed, I think, actually. Um, not that this should, that this probably won't have any impact really on um, on what we're doing, but in the init here, something I didn't do, which might affect iOS users. So if you found stuff doesn't work yet, this might be why. Um, platform dot is iOS, handy piece of code to tell you what platform you're on. Um, you may need to request iOS permissions. Um, because Apple can be really weird about what you're allowed to do. Uh, and let's write this function just for anybody who needs it. Trust iOS permission. This is like not one I can really show you working very much because I'm not on an Apple device, but um, for this, you just need uh, Flutter, local location plugin, um, resolve platform specific implementation, which does, I guess, what the name suggests. Uh, because we're on iOS, we need to have some specific things. Um, iOS Flutter local notifications plugin uh, dot request permissions. Uh, and the permissions you need to request are going to be. Um, do I have an extra? Oh, 
feel like I'm, I have an extra uh, parentheses in here. Oh, sorry, this shouldn't be a open parentheses. Uh, this is actually a type. The type of implementation is this. Uh, request permissions and required stuff. Uh, oh, I promise this exists. Um, alert is false. Uh, badge is true. Sound is true. Again, may need to tweak with these. Uh, I can't even tell you if this worked or not because I'm not on an iOS device, but you may need this if you are, just in case. Now, um, let's go back to what we were doing, which was we wanted to set up a function that would give us a list of the pending notification requests. So kind of unsurprisingly, it's going to be a future. Um, it's going to be a list. It's going to be a list of pending notification requests. The name of this function is going to be get pending notification requests, um, and it's going to be async. Oh, why are you mad? It doesn't return yet. It's okay, we will. We're just gonna have one line of code, which is nice. Take this and get the pending notification requests, done. All right, very simple function. Just grab our pending notifications. Um, and now we need to actually do something with them. So in our main, let's have that work. Uh, and I think what we're going to do is we're just going to have a function show pending notifications that's going to show them off. So the pending notification requests are the ones we're waiting for from the function that we just wrote. Let's go with the longest code ever. Kind of ugly looking, but that's okay. Um, so just to notify, we are pending notifications um, for each one. Uh, we're just going to print it out. inside of a string, we have um, pending requests. Why is this not all completing? Um, oh, sorry, pending notification dot ID slash pending notification title slash Pending notification button. Oh, very long string. Um, yeah, I guess that's that. Okay, just so we can see them. Um, let's give this a shot. Okay, so right now when I print this, it should not really tell me if there is anything pending because there aren't any. Pending is nothing. But if I click this twice and then click this really quickly, one, two, click. You can see we got pending notifications, number 100, number 101, and look, there they are. And now when I click this, they are no longer pending because they have shown up. So hooray, we got everything that we needed to get done with just a little bit of debugging along the way. Hopefully that didn't bore you guys out too much, just me piecing together the missing parts of that one function. But um, I believe there isn't to, is there anything else I wanted to show off here? Um, oh yeah, I, I said I was going to make a form. Right now, um, we've just been filling in um, notifications that all have default values. Let's make this a little nicer and make it so that we actually are going to create our own notifications um, using a form, which I've not done yet. Um, and to do that, we're going to I think in the in the lecture I might do this in like the proper order, which is to um, actually set up the um, the form first. So here's our app bar, and after our app bar, I have a body which is going to be a builder, and we're going to build a form. Uh, and form builder is going to be a widget that we make, and it's going to have.
context. Uh, and this is going to return a form. And this is why I needed that form key from way back when. The key is the form key. Uh, the child is going to be a column because we're going to fill it out with some stuff. The cross axis alignment is going to be start. I don't think I need to do this, but that's okay. Um, and we're going to have some text form fields as children. So uh, we need text form field. And it's going to need to have a decoration. is going to be the label that says the title and when we change it it sets the title oh we have variables for this we don't have variables for this yet well, we should probably do that um, let's get uh, title uh, body and payload. We come back here, we're going to set our title. Client is not happy with that. Oh, probably uh, should put this code in the right spot. This does not belong in the build method, it belongs over here. There we go. Title is the value. There we go. Uh, and we should set the style, I think, as well. Make it big enough for us to see. Uh, let's make sure this looks nice before we go on. Okay, so we got title. We can do the other things after. Um, so, comma here. Let's get two more of these. Body, body, payload, payload. And then we'll wrap this up with a row that has the three options that we were looking for. So a row. Um, let's space it evenly. And the children are going to be some buttons. So we got elevated button. Um, on pressed, we can uh, notifications. Dot. Or sorry, I need to I need to write this out as a full proper function thing. Um, no parameters are needed. Uh, the child is just going to be text that says now. That's fine. Um, space this out a bit. When we press this button, we're going to take our notifications and we're going to send a notification now, and we're just going to pass it title, body, and payload. Uh, and we're going to promise these all exist. <laughs> uh, yeah, that seems fine. Um, I can use a better thing than unchanged, right? I was using um, I was using unchanged, and it, it really like runs a lot of extra code. I think I want on editing complete. Might be a little better. Let's try it out. On editing complete. No, is that not okay? Uh, on editing complete, which one specifies? Okay, no, never mind. We'll leave it on unchanged. It's probably a better way to do it, but it's fine. I don't think it should cause huge performance issues anyway, so it's probably okay to leave it like that. Um, all right, we got our uh, now. Then we need to do our um, later. 
So for that, so there's a first button, let's make our second button, which is going to be later. I guess we only need two buttons, right? Because the other one doesn't actually make a notification. Um, so for this, we're looking to, I guess we gotta kind of run all this code again. Uh, let's see here. So this, 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 this. Yeah, we're just gonna copy this. I suppose I can change this to take um to take parameters instead, but eh, it's fine. I'll fix this in class. I think I'll make it a little bit smoother. This is the the kind of dirty run through of things aren't doing quite what I want them to do. Um, so this line of code here is just going to be replaced with the entire copy of this method from below, except that it's going to have title, body, payload, which are all promised to exist. Um, oh, and this is an asynchronous function. Okay, let's give it a shot. These buttons are small, let's make them big. Style, text style, font size, there it is. Gotta be able to see what we're doing. Okay, there we go. So title is, um, my notif title, my notif body, payload, go. Hey, look at that. My notif title, my notif body, click on it, and there's the payload. And I can click on later as well. Notification three seconds. And hey, there it is. Same thing. All right, that should wrap up what we're doing. Um, probably in class, what I think I might do is I might not bother with the buttons up here. Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll leave them up here and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see exactly how much learning value there is coming from, uh, from the, the messy approach that I've taken in this video. But, you know, that's what these videos are for is, you know, I, I don't uh, script anything that I'm doing, as you can quite tell. Um, but knowing exactly what's going on, why things are going wrong, how to fix things, is all I think useful stuff for you guys in case you run into similar problems with stuff that I haven't covered in class, for instance. Um, so that concludes this video for the day, uh, and I will see you guys in class. Take care.